At this point, I'm pretty comfortable with animating walk cycles. That is to say, two-legged human walk cycles from the side. So what I'm going to do in this video is try to animate some uh, difficult animal walk cycles. This is definitely going to be challenging, but let's get started with... Alright, so on each one of these, I'm going to try to animate the walk cycle all on my own without doing any research or, you know, looking up how to do it. Based on my own experiences, uh, it's gonna go poorly, I assume. But yep, I'll animate my very scuffed walk cycle and then try to make a really pretty one, complete with coloring and backgrounds. But yeah, um, let's, let's try to animate a cat. I just gotta draw one first. And despite the video where I drew 30 cats, uh, I really struggle to draw one. Like, what is this? I do wonder if I should animate the tail. I'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna draw both of these legs forward and both of the, no, I'll draw the head and legs forward and draw these other legs back. You know what though? Uh, <laughs> the head's a bit, okay, this body should start like here. I don't know how the legs even bend, but it's, uh, it's fine. We'll call that the first frame. Uh, now I'm gonna try just redraw this whole thing. I'm gonna make this red so I can actually see it. I'm gonna have this leg lift up, I guess. So I'm kind of just doing a classic walk cycle except i'm doing it twice cats are kind of also like more light on their feet and it's probably less uh up and down i think i'll just have the tail like just wag back and forth it can like droop down as this leg comes up i'll have the body and head just go go up a little bit does this look like a dog i hope not right so like a classic walk cycle I'm gonna have these crossing over. I'm kind of just drawing them like human legs. Okay, so I feel like <laughs> these aren't supposed to be in sync, like the front two and the back two, but I'm just gonna try that, see what it looks like. I feel like this, this tail is gonna look really silly. Uh, I'm okay with this looking completely deranged. Really all we need is these four frames. Uh, then we have to copy them and change some stuff, but yeah. I have to fix the tail. Uh, okay, so I guess, hmm, I see. Okay, I think I have a completed cat walk cycle. And this is what it looks like. So, um, not the best. There's kind of a sudden jump right here. It's like the floor gets lower somehow. The two legs being in sync, I imagine is just incorrect. But I'm sure there's some kind of simple pattern. Tail wouldn't do that, but it's a, it's a character choice. Now I'm gonna try to do a good catwalk cycle. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put commentary over these because I'm probably gonna spend hours on each one. Uh, so enjoy. First thing I did was draw the head and body of the cat. Turns out it's hard to get the head shape right if you're going for more than just a circle. It's gonna go through some tweaks. Now to animate it, I focused on one leg at a time. There are quite a lot of resources on YouTube, but I mostly use these two videos. The critical element here is that it's basically just a normal walk cycle in the front and one in the back, but they're offset. So the leg on the right of the screen will land maybe a quarter of a second before the one on the left of the screen. The way they bend is kind of specific, so I just tried to mimic what I saw. But it doesn't need to be too accurate for this kind of thing. The paws also drag behind when they're moving through the air. Once the legs were done, I animated the body moving up and down with a bit of a bend. Then I made the head move along with it and added some rotation. For the tail, I just made it wag around in a short loop. With the rough animation complete, I started on the line art. I wanted the ears to move a bit, so I drew them in different positions with the bobbing of the head. I also made the whiskers jiggle up and down. The eye was the only thing I drew once as a static image and moved around. Now to colour it in with some white and grey fur and a pink nose. For the background, I made the classic side-scrolling forest on a dirt track, with a few layers moving at different speeds and blur for depth. So this is my final cat animation. The timing on the legs is a little off. I think the back ones need a couple more frames of delay. The ears also look a bit like they have a life of their own, which can work, but I was more looking for just exaggerated physics. Still, a quaint animation and a big improvement over the first one. Now let's move on to number two. So 
Also normally when I animate a spider, I just draw it frame by frame with legs essentially in random positions. This time I tried doing four sets of actual walk cycles, where the first pair are synced with the third pair and the second with the fourth. I thought this diagonal view would look best, but it's not the easiest to deal with. I really didn't know how each leg moved and what it would look like from that angle, so I just fumbled my way through it. Then I added some shading and eyes and fangs. Here's my spider walk cycle on the spot. And here it is moving across the screen. The second one looks much better to me, probably because the animation is more hidden. Well, that's our baseline. Now, the real thing. So, I had the right idea with two pairs of legs being in sync and the other two counteracting them. I found these videos helpful. The legs are made of three main segments, but I also have a bit of a foot on the end. So I worked on one pair of legs at a time using different colors to separate them. Then I made the body jiggle up and down a bit, and plonked in eight placeholder eyes. With the animation looking good, I moved on to line work. I decided to draw the top two leg segments as these loosely rectangular shapes, and the bottom as a thin tapering needle. Then I coloured them in with red and dark grey. After that, I drew the few frames of the body, and added this red triangle thing to make it look cooler. The movement of the body made my initial leg animation disconnected, so I added these black tubes that might not be scientifically accurate, but sort of fixed the problem. Now I'm redrawing the eyes and adding some shine. The background is going to be a simple wooden floor that I want to look like it's moving in 3D despite using a 2D program. So what I did was draw a pattern that gets larger towards the camera, copied and increased its size so it loops. I used a classic tween on the size and position with the anchor point at the back. It was finicky, but the end result was pretty convincing. The last thing I did was animate a shadow underneath the spider and some shading on the spider itself. And that is my spider walk cycle. Pretty cool, pretty creepy. I think maybe the legs should have been closer together. Um, it's kind of an ant looking formation right now. Uh, obviously it still looks like a spider because it's because of the patterns and the eyes. But yeah, not too bad. Background worked pretty well. Of course those three big lines that don't move, uh, the angle doesn't quite work, but if you don't draw attention to it, like I just did, so probably fine. So solid little spider animation. Let's move on to number three. So we've gone from four legs to eight, and now it's arguably ten. The pincers aren't doing much of the walking, but uh, I'm counting them. I wanted to do a front view of the crab walking sideways. I did the same general leg pattern as the spider, with every other set being synced up. But the movement of the legs was a bit of a mystery to me. I managed to put something together, and then for the pincers I just wobbled them around. So it's an odd looking crab. The legs look like they're moving faster than they are because of how much they're clashing with each other. Definitely room for improvement. So let's see what we can do. It's essentially going to be eight legs with three segments and alternating walk cycle pairs, just like the spider. But I promise it's different. I looked at some reference footage and spent way too long being confused and trying to animate it with the full legs. Then I got a handle on it and started with single lines as a base. So I did each pair of legs going back and then started fleshing them out. After that, I animated the body and pincers moving up and down. I also had the eyes stretch cartoonishly for fun. Line art was done on a bunch of different layers to keep things separate and editable. I coloured the crab in with various shades of orange and brown. For the background, the idea was this beach with a rock pile or rock wall. I drew it in Photoshop, but I was recording the wrong app the whole time, so you'll have to take my word for it. Then I just had to drop it into animate and move it horizontally. And there you have my crab walk cycle. So it's, it's pretty cute. It's not the most advanced looking thing. And you might think all of those legs are just copy pasted, but I actually did every single one from scratch. I do like the bouncing eyeballs. Anyway, that's a crab. Let's move on to the fourth and final creature. We're continuing the upwards trend in leg count with a centipede. Quite the jump, but first thing to do is draw a path for this thing to follow. I went with this big curvy loop. To animate the body, I took a thick brush and drew along a certain portion of the path, moving it forward bit by bit. I used the onion skin to maintain the length and speed. Easy, but very time consuming. Next, I drew some antennae. 
Then frame by frame I added 10 pairs of legs, changing the position randomly so it looked like they were moving. And here is my first walking centipede. I kind of dig this, honestly. It's a certain simple style, and I think it does its job. But let's try and improve upon it. This time I split it into 16 segments, so we're gonna have 32 legs and whatever's poking out the front and back. I figured I could animate one segment moving up and down and duplicate it. Then with a frame or two of stagger, it would create a wave effect. Next was animating the legs. I had one moving forward while the other was moving back, making a standard top-down two-legged walk cycle. With the delay on each segment, the legs would also have that kind of wave effect, which is close to the look I was after from this video. I made a new, bigger segment for the head and animated the antennae moving in and out. But then I did a similar thing for the back end, but smaller. Once the animation was solid, I finalized the colors and added some shadows and highlights. Time for a background, and for this I painted some concrete in Photoshop. It's the kind of thing where you can just find a free texture and plonk it in, but I'll just be special and do it by hand. So I animated it moving horizontally and a little bit vertically, then added a drop shadow to the centipede. Well, there you have it. It's definitely more detailed and fluid than the uh, first attempt. But to be honest, I think they both have uh, different uses and appeals. Funny thing is, I pretty much spent the same amount of time on each animation for the centipede. But I would call the second one better, I think. It's the more HD, close-up, high FPS version. All right, that was me animating four different difficult, according to me, walk cycles. I definitely learned a thing or two from this. Maybe you did too. But I hope you had fun watching the video, and hopefully I'll see you in another video next week. Goodbye. Oh,